Good evening and welcome to the news here on the news tonight on Raj Sabha TV. I'm Tracy Shilji and let's start with the headlines. Standoff between government and opposition continues on parliament. First week of the monsoon session ends in a logjam. Supreme Court pulls up CBI on the Vyapam scam, asks when will it take over the entire investigation and appoint prosecutors to conduct the trial. Select committee given time till the 29th of July to submit the real estate bill, panel to have its final meeting on Monday. And another shooting in the US, gunman opens fire inside a movie theater in Louisiana, kills two people, injures many before taking his own life. Our top story, the standoff between the government and the opposition washed out Rajya Sabha proceedings for the entire first week of the monsoon session. Deadlock continued today over demands calling for resignations of Sushma Swaraj, Vasundra Raje and Shivrat Singh Chauhan in the Lalit Gate and the Vyapam scam controversies. Amid the war of words, business of the house became the biggest casualty. BJP ministers embroiled in the Lalit Modi controversy and the Vyapam scam faced the wrath of the opposition for the fourth day in succession. Upping the ante against the government, Congress leader Pramod Tiwari gave notice for suspension of business to discuss the issues. The NDA members were also slammed for protests against the opposition earlier in the day. As war efforts continued, the chair adjourned the house till noon. When the house reassembled, Chairman Mohammed Hamid Ansari urged the members to allow the questionnaire to function. But uproar continued. Honorable members, please. Sir. For a change, let's have the question hour. If you have a question relating to question number 46, yes, after sir. it has been asked and answered, please do. No, no. Is... There was no let up in verbal duels even in the post lunch session. Amid din, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley withdrew the Negotiable Instruments Bill 2015. Sir, I rise to move that this House recommends to the Lok Sabha that the Lok Sabha do agree for leave being granted by the Rajya Sabha to withdraw the bill further to amend the Negotiable Instruments Act 1881, which was passed by the Lok Sabha on 13th May 2015 and laid on the table of the Rajya Sabha on the same day. The stalemate also stifled the private members' business. Amid protests by opposition parties led by the Congress, the chair adjourned the House till Monday. Priti Mishra, Radha Sabha TV. House stands adjourned till 11 a.m. on Monday. Well, Lok Sabha proceedings also saw a complete washout in the first week. While NDA members held a dharna today against the adamant attitude of the opposition, the Congress accused the ruling coalition of trying to divert the attention of the alleged corruption cases. Day 5 of the ongoing monsoon session in Lok Sabha was no different from that of the first four days. Stalemate in the House continued over opposition's demand to remove tainted ministers over the Lalit Modi controversy and Vyapam scam. Congress pressed for the resignation as soon as the day's proceedings began. It forced Speaker Sumitra Mahajan to adjourn the House for the day within minutes. No business was transacted. Not even papers listed for the day could be tabled. To meet again on Monday, 11 o'clock. Earlier, NDA members held a dharna outside the parliament against the adamant attitude of the opposition parties on the issue. They also raked up alleged scams in Congress rule states. However, the opposition criticized the protests as mere politics to divert attention from the key corruption issues. आइए चर्चा में भाग लेते हैं सुषमा जी ने कहा मैं जवाब देने के लिए तैयार हूं लेकिन कांग्रेस पार्टी के अपने सांसदों का अपने मुख्यमंत्रियों का जवाब देगी इट फॉर द रूलिंग पार्टी यू नो टू ओपन अप द डेडलॉक बाय सेंस ऑफ एकोमोडेशन एंड अलाउइंग द पार्लियामेंट्री प्रैक्टिस टू प्रिवेल अपॉन द एंटायर कंट्री इज वाचिंग हु इज रिस्पांसिबल फॉर दिस आई ओनली अपील 
that wise counsel prevail, let them come back to parliament, let us discuss, we have a lot of business, a lot of issues to be discussed and debated and decide. Congress has already sought unity among the opposition parties to back its no resignation, no discussion strategy during the session. So far, only the NCP and the AAP have responded to Congress calls for a united front. However, Samajwadi Party, Trinamool Congress, BJD, AIA, DMK and DMK maintained a distance from the Congress, even as they protested on the issue of corruption. With inputs from Pranav Goswami, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. For more on this story, we're joined by C.L. Manoj, who's the assistant political editor with the Economic Times, joining us from the capital now. Uh, Manoj, you know, let's, uh, even keeping aside the amount of, that is actually costing the exchequer all these days of wasted business there in parliament, forgetting that, just looking at the politics of it as well, could this be backfiring from the, for the opposition eventually if this continues? Well, I think that as you rightly said, that is very sad that, you know, parliament should function because it's a very important uh, for Indian democracy. People do expect that uh, important legislations will be passed during the session. But at the same time, as uh, we saw the first weeks, the entire session of the monsoon session has been washed off. We don't know one more, uh, you know, we have two more weeks now remaining. The, both the sides, the government as well as the opposition have taken a very, you know, rigid stand. Uh, there seems to be no middle ground. There seems to be no attempts to reach even onto the negotiation table. So uh, it is like, uh, you know, it's a war of nerves. Mm. And we'll have to wait and see uh, how things will unfold next week. Mm. But as of now, we get an impression that we may see a repeat of the same week when the session starts from next Monday. Mm. Uh it, it, it will not happen because, of course, the government is saying uh, that, you know, uh, the Vyapam scam is actually a state problem. But for hypothetically, if they do agree to have a discussion on it, that is definitely going to put the opposition on the back foot because they are, of course, hoping that the uh, government is definitely not going to be looking into any of these resignations of Vasanth Rajay or, uh, uh, you know, uh, Shivra Singh Chauhan dealing with the Vyapam scam. But if that does happen, do we see any kind of business then eventually happening? No, as you are aware that right from the first day of the, this uh, week, the government made it clear in both houses, both mm. in Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha, that they have no problem in discussing the issue of VAPM and Lalit Modi issue. But at the same time, we also saw the opposition also making it absolutely clear that there cannot be a discussion mm. unless the demand for the resignation of three ministers, the external affairs ministers and two chief ministers are not, uh, you know, agreed to. So therefore, both the team as of now, have taken a very rigid stand. Usually, we should uh, see whether the Prime Minister would now make an effort and, you know, the senior most leaders of all the political parties will, you know, mm. agree to have a dialogue on a give-and-take basis. But then, what is that give-and-take basis in the given political tussle is a very high stake for both the uh, sides. Both the sides, yes. So, uh, most of the parties, I'm sure everybody is aware that, you know, a public disapproval about this kind of disruptions. Mm. But I think this is the situation or situations like that. We also expect the best out of the top leaders to find a way to end the deadlock. That's right. Do you think that is the BJP strategy in some way? You know, at, at the end of it, make it look like it's the Congress, it's the opposition who's not making work, uh, you know, a progress in the House. Uh, you know, they are, of course, saying they're open for a discussion. Yes, the issue of resignations, of course, is there. The issue of Prime Minister's silence on these issues, are, of course, there. But then, you know, they do, they are, in fact, seeming a bit more open that let's discuss it. Uh, but do you think it's their strategy? They're just waiting it out to make it look like it's the Congress's fault? No, what we have been hearing and also what we have been reading is that the government is trying or hoping that the, there will be a division in the opposition uh, unity and they will be able to take away at least some regional parties away from the Congress and mm. all. But at the same time, we also saw that yesterday when the Congress vice president wanted to have a meeting with the uh, opposition parties, uh, only national, uh, you know, NCP and uh, Amatmi party representatives turned up. Mm. But... At the same time, when you see, uh, when you look at the floor, what's happening on the floor, even the left parties, uh, JDU, uh, RJD, to extend uh, even SP, they are all in principle in agreement with the 
uh, Congress mm. that there should be action against ministers. So therefore, uh, the talking about disunity or you know creating a division on the floor mm. as of now it looks uh, not very easy mm. uh, but at the same time uh, there are parties like biju janata dal trinamool yes. congress uh, they made it very clear that they want to have discussions mm. but then we should also remember that the congress is the single largest party in the yes. uh, rajya sabha yes. as a op main opposition they are also the single largest party mm. and congress plus, plus left rjd Uh, JDU and some other parties, they have about 60 to 70 yes. members. Which is why perhaps Sabha. it's so easy so for them to call the shots. And, yes. and if this, yeah, if, so, yeah, if, so if that kind of a lineup and if they enter the well, hmm. uh, it's not very easy to carry on with Absolutely. the disruption and, you know, uh, carry on with the business hmm. unmindful of this. So that's what we so are like seeing. So like you pointing so it out, it may be. So let's see whether the government say that yes, they will be able to just, divide. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just a trailer of how you know the rest of the two weeks are perhaps going to be looking like. Thanks so much, Manoj, for joining us. We're running short of time, but thanks so much for joining us and you know uh, sharing with us more details of what you're learning, of course, and what we can expect in the days to come. Meanwhile, uh, talking about a little bit of business that. It did in fact take place in Rajya Sabha. The Select Committee is uh, looking into the real estate bill and has been given more time to submit its report. A motion extending the deadline was approved by Rajya Sabha on Friday. Take a look. The Rajya Sabha extended the deadline for the Select Panel examining the real estate regulation and development bill. It will now submit its report on 29 July. Chairman of the committee, Anil Madhav Dave, moved the motion seeking extension. Few members from opposition parties have sought more time to go through the report at the last meeting of the panel. The panel is likely to have the final meeting on Monday. 99% percent काम हो गया है. कुछ language में परिवर्तन है. उसके लिए आधा एक घंटा बैठने की आवश्यकता थी. मैं चाहता हूं कि हम अच्छा से अच्छा बिल संसद के सामने ले जाएं, जिसके अंदर बाद में बहुत कम करेक्शन करने की आवश्यकता हो. The bill seeks to establish the real estate regulatory authority. for regulation and promotion of the real estate sector and to ensure sale of plot apartment or building in an efficient and transparent manner it also seeks to protect the interest of consumers by making it mandatory for the developers to maintain 70% of the amount collected from buyers for a project in a separate bank account and use it only for construction of that project it also seeks to establish state level tribunals called real estate appellate tribunals hume ek swasth real estate swasth हाउसिंग इंडस्ट्री का वातावरण चाहिए जिसके अंदर पैसा भी हो जिसमें बिल्डर्स भी सुखी हों जिसके अंदर कंज्यूमर सेटिस्फाइड हों उन्हें अच्छा से अच्छा प्रोडक्ट मिले द बिल वॉज रेफर बाई राज्य सभा टू अलेक्ट कमिटी ऑन मे सिक्स फॉर इट्स एग्जामिनेशन इट वॉज ऑस टू सम्बिट इट्स रिपोर्ट बाई फ्राइडे दैट्स द लास्ट डे ऑफ द फर्स्ट वीक ऑफ द मानसून सेशन कृति मिश्रा राज्य सभा टीवी And let's get you the latest in the Vyapam scam probe. The CBI got a rap from the Supreme Court today and was questioned why the agency is yet to take over the complete investigation. The Apex Court has asked the CBI to hand over a specific time frame within a week. It also asked when the agency will be appointing prosecutors to conduct the trial in the Vyapam scam cases. CBI has so far filed 14 FIRs in the case including the death of an MBBS student Namrata Damod. On Thursday the CBI had registered an FIR against the former controller of examination of Yapam besides 37 others in connection with the alleged scam. सबसे बड़े जो हम डेवलपमेंट आज देख रहे हैं कि इट इज हेडिंग टुवर्ड्स एन इंपार्शियल इन्वेस्टिगेशन एंड इंपार्शियल मॉनिटरिंग. एक एक एज अ कंप्लेनेंट हम इससे ज्यादा कुछ एक्सपेक्ट भी नहीं कर सकते हैं. और आज कोर्ट ने जो इंडिकेट किया कि सबसे पहले CBI अपने शेड्यूल दे कोर्ट को कि कितने दिन में वो टेक ओवर करेगी बाय नेक्स्ट फ्राइडे विच इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्योंकि सीबीआई को केसेस ट्रांसफर हो चुके हैं और हम चाहते हैं कि इंडिपेंडेंट इन्वेस्टिगेशन इन केसेस में हो Meanwhile, Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi took his party's fight against the proposed land bill to Andhra Pradesh today. He undertook a 10-kilometer-long foot march in Anandpur district. Addressing the rally, he slammed the NDA government over the contentious land bill and said that the government will not be allowed to take lands away from farmers. He also charged that the Prime Minister did not want to accord special status to Andhra Pradesh, which the Congress is fully committed on. The land bill, the bill that we put through Parliament. what that farmers should be should be asked their permission before the land taken away from them the bill ensures that politicians and their big businessmen friends could not just go and take land away from farmers the congress party took a stand in parliament and we decided that we are not going to let the prime minister 
take the land of India's farmers that easily. Meanwhile, taking the BJP poll preparation in Bihar a notch further, Prime Minister Narendra Modi will be addressing a rally in Muzaffarpur tomorrow and he is expected to announce a slew of projects for the state. Preparations are underway for the rally, which is likely to see the Prime Minister launching a counter-campaign against the opposition's objection to the key land reforms. He is likely to focus on the agriculture sector in his speech. He will also be inaugurating an Indian Institute of Technology flag off a new train and signal the opening of a new railway line. The rally also comes just months before the state assembly polls, where his party is pitted against former ally JDU's alliance with the RJD. In fact, it would be very interesting to see, of course, the amount of people that eventually turn up. Uh, it, an effort is being made anyway uh, to make sure most ministers uh, attend this rally. Uh, most of the leaders do attend it from all parts of the state, attend this huge rally that is slated for tomorrow. Uh, the Prime Minister, of course, like we pointed out, is going to be announcing a slew of projects for Bihar and also perhaps... Uh, a new financial package for the state, something that has been, of course, the Chief Minister Nitish Kumar's demand for the state. Um, that is, of course, something that's on the line. And uh, it will be in interesting to see, of course, how the RGD and the JDU respond to what uh, Narendra Modi would have to say. This is, of course, his first uh, rally, his first visit, rather, to the state after being Prime Minister and also after the JDU uh, uh, actually, uh, after the JDU cut off its ties with the NDA, uh, this will be perhaps his second rally that we'll be seeing in the state. Uh, one, of course, took place during the polls uh, that took place last year. And we'll have to wait and see eventually of how much the turnout turns out to be, how successful it is, and uh, also perhaps rubbing it in the face of the JDU, of, the, of Nitish Kumar, that perhaps his biggest political folly was to uh, turn down his uh, alliance with the NDA. We'll be tracking all developments here on Rajasabha TV. Remember the rally, of course, to take place tomorrow in Muzaffarpur. Like we pointed out, Narendra Modi will be visiting Muzaffarpur tomorrow, and this will be his first visit, in fact, to the state after being prime minister. Um, this will be his first rally, rather, after being Prime Minister. And this is uh, going to be a big one with a slew of projects that he would be announcing in the state, apart from a railway project, a new railway line. Uh, indications are that he would be announcing a new package for the state as well. We'll track all developments here on Rajasabha TV. But for the moment, we'll take a quick break here. And up next, food safety regulator submits the draft of its proposed quality and safety norms to regulate food and health supplements. Details of that in a bit. Last-ditch effort from Yaqub Memon to escape the gallows. Amid fresh debate on the death penalty. Will this Bombay Blast's convict hang? Will justice be served? Watch The Big Picture at 9.30pm on Rajya Sabha Television. <laughs> Welcome back. You're watching the news tonight. Now let's head on to the capital and Lieutenant Governor Najib Jung today hit out at the Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal, accusing him of using inappropriate language against Prime Minister Narendra Modi in a letter. Jung said that Kejriwal's letter left him deeply disappointed. Earlier, Kejriwal had written a strongly worded letter to Jung targeting Modi over the ongoing rift in the national capital. He alleged that the LG was working at Modi's behest to weaken the Delhi government. Jung also added that the tone of the letter did not reflect well on a person who is serving as a chief minister. The latest spat between the LG and the Delhi's chief minister is over the appointment of the AAP leader Swati Maliwal as chief of the Delhi Commission for Women. टकराव की राजनीति छोड़कर दिल्ली का भला करें दिल्ली की जनता अपनी भलाई चाहती है दिल्ली में विकास होना चाहिए दिल्ली में काम की तरफ किसी का ध्यान है नहीं एक अपॉइंटमेंट के ऊपर कई दिन इसी में निकल जाएंगे 
काम कब करेंगे आप आपको काफ़ी समय निकल गया आप लेकिन कोई लाइन ऑफ एक्शन दिखाई नहीं दे रहा तो मुझे लगता है ये सब शतरंज की गोटियाँ चल रहे हैं In other news, the Food Sef Safety Regulator (FSSAI) today submitted a draft of its proposed quality and safety norms to regulate food and health supplements. It proposed a ban on selling them under medicine labels and announced new norms for products based on Ayurveda, Siddha, Yunani, and traditional health systems. Under the new norms, no person shall manufacture or sell any such food products unless they comply with the specified regulations. The FSSAI has proposed that formulations should be based on sound medical or nutritional principles and supported by scientific data. Labels have to clearly mention purpose, target consumer group and the physiological conditions which they address. It has also sought public comments on its draft in the next 60 days. The new norms will come into effect next year. At present, India does not have regulatory guidelines for approval and monitoring such products. And now to a special report. Every hour, 16 Indians are killed in road accidents across the country. In 2014, 80% deaths on roads were traffic-related. Many of them could have been prevented if the victims could have access to effective trauma care. But various plans to remedy the situation have proved a non-starter. The 11th five-year plan planned a pan-India trauma care network to reduce deaths due to road accidents. Effectively implemented. It should have cut down the number of preventable deaths to just 10 percent. Last 11th uh, plan, we had 140 and in 140, we had about 138. I mean, it is in all or not working, but in the way of completion. Hai. The plan was to ensure that no trauma victim needed to be transported for more than 50 kilometers. Designated trauma care facilities were to come up every 100 kilometers. स्कीम में ऐसा कोई स्लो नहीं है जो पैसा यूटिलाइज किया उसका यूटिलाइजेशन सर्टिफिकेट नहीं आया है जिसके कारण हमने अभी उसको पैसा रिलीज नहीं किया जैसे अपने यूटिलाइज करेंगे हम लोग पैसा रिलीज करेंगे तो वर्क बढ़ेगा इन रिप्लाई टू क्वेश्चन रेज इन पार्लियामेंट अर्लियर दिस वीक द हेल्थ मिनिस्ट्री साइटेड नॉन अवेलेबिलिटी ऑफ टेक्निकल स्टाफ डॉक्टर्स एंड न्यूरो सर्जन एज वेल एज डिफिकल्टी एंड डीलेज इन गेटिंग इक्विपमेंट and signing hospital mous as the reasons for slow implementation because governmental procedures are so archaic you have to have so many approvals and so many sanctions and if anyone raises objection then again file gets stuck so therefore it is the procedural delay which is accounting for most of the delays in this case but uh, also the uh, political will and administrative will to establish these centers is missing The 12th plan approved 85 more trauma care facilities. These were in accident prone areas on highways not covered earlier. But according to the health ministry's answer, till date only 30 hospitals have been actually approved trauma care facilities. Anshu Jaisingh's report for Rajya Sabha TV. And now let's get you some more news from across the country in nationwide. The Supreme Court has directed the center and the state governments to install CCTV cameras in all prisons. It has also asked them to take a call on installing them in police lockups. The court said that every police station should have at least two women constables. It also directed all union territories to set up their own state human rights commissions. Activist Sitista Setlwad got a reprieve from court over allegations of fraud, misappropriation of funds and violation of the FCRA. A Mumbai court refused the anticipatory bail to Setalwad and her husband Javed Anand, but they were granted interim bail by the Bombay High Court. This means the duo can not be arrested for at least another fortnight. Suspected militants carried out a series of grenade attacks in Srinagar targeting telecom service providers. One person was injured after two attacks were carried out in the Karanagar area this morning. Investigations have begun and the police are currently searching for the two attackers. Today's attacks came after a lull of nearly 2 months. On to international news now in a shocking incident in the US a lone gunman opened fire inside a movie theater in Louisiana before killing himself. Police officials are investigating the motive behind the killings even as US President Barack Obama admitted that the failure to pass gun safety laws is the greatest frustration of his presidency. Another gruesome incident of gun violence in the US. A 58-year-old gunman opened fire on Thursday inside a crowded movie theater in Lafayette in Louisiana. Two people were killed and seven others were injured before he took his own life. We are a resilient community. 
We ask people for their thoughts, for their prayers. Let us shower these families with love. Police officials identified the gunman, although they offered no immediate motive for the killings. Investigators are now searching his home as they piece together evidences. Just hours before the shooting, in an interview to BBC, US President Barack Obama expressed his distress on his failure to pass common sense gun safety laws even in the face of repeated mass killings. Just 18 months left in power, Obama has pushed stronger for stricter gun control laws throughout his presidency. A lot of experts on the scene right now. The right people are here. So we're just asking the public to work with us. There's nothing uh, that we believe that has any other concerns past this point. Uh, that, uh, again, there's no other active shooter out there. And we don't believe there's anybody else involved. So we want to make sure the public understands that. A similar shooting happened three years ago in Colorado when a gunman opened fire at a movie theater in Aurora during the midnight screening of the Batman film The Dark Knight Rises, killing 12 people and wounding 70 others. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Let's get you some more international updates in Global Buzz. The Pentagon today reported that a U.S. airstrike in Afghanistan on the 11th of July killed a high-ranking Al-Qaeda operational commander, Abu Khalil al-Sudani. Pentagon described al-Sudani as the head of the Al-Qaeda's suicide and explosive operations, directly linked to plotting attacks against the U.S. The Islamic State has claimed responsibility for a deadly car blast in a busy Baghdad market on Tuesday, which claimed 50 lives. At least 48 people were wounded when a car packed with explosives was detonated in the new Baghdad district of Iraq. Several shops and restaurants were also damaged. U.S. President Barack Obama will arrive in Kenya today for a five-day tour to Ethiopia and Kenya. He will meet the Kenyan president to discuss issues related to trade, investment, security, counter-terrorism, democracy and human rights. This is Obama's first visit to his father's homeland as the U.S. president. He is expected to spend time with family members still living in Kenya. Thailand has ind indicted 72 people suspected of involvement in human trafficking, including 15 Thai officials. The move comes after Thailand launched an investigation into human trafficking in May after the discovery of 26 bodies in graves buried in a jungle near the Thailand-Malaysia border. The investigation is being termed as the biggest investigation into human trafficking in Thailand's history. And now let's change focus and get to you all the sports updates in Sports Beat. Indian hockey coach Paul Vanas was removed finally from his post today. The special committee constituted by Hockey India said that the Dutchman will not resume his services. Paul claimed that he has been sacked by Hockey India following an altercation with the Federation President Narendra Batra. This is the fourth sacking of the Indian hockey coach in five years. Indian golfer Shubham Jaglan created history by clinching his second successive title at the IGGA World Stars of Junior Golf event in Las Vegas. The 10-year-old golfer shot a three-round score of 106, winning by a five-stroke margin. This is Jaglan's second title within a week. National fencing star Hoshiar Singh died after he was allegedly pushed off a moving train in Uttar Pradesh. The incident is reported to have happened when Hoshiar was returning to Mathura with his mother, wife and seven-year-old child. Hoshiar won the bronze in the 2005 Under-17 National Championships in Kerala. Champions League winner Barcelona have been fined €30,000 after fans displayed pro-Catalan independence flags at last month's Champions League final in Berlin. European soccer's governing body UEFA announced the decision following meeting of its control, ethics and disciplinary body. Barcelona has long been an outlet for fans who support Catalan independence to express their beliefs. And that's all we could uh, fit in on the news tonight. Thanks so much for joining us and have a great weekend.